Right, so it's breaking news time as Iran have launched their long-expected attack against Israel tonight, threatened after the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran back in July. It's coming now following ongoing attacks on Lebanon by Israel, of course, which have culminated in a ground invasion beginning this morning, which is what this video was originally going to be about, but has been most notable by strikes on Beirut, which also killed Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah just a few days ago. These strikes from Iran have also come following Israeli retaliatory attacks on the civilian port of Adida in Yemen as well, following further strikes by the Houthis earlier this week. Thus far, at time of writing, it's been estimated that around 200 missiles have been fired into Israel from Iran in what has been called only the first wave amidst warnings of repercussions if Israel strikes back. If Netanyahu wanted a wider war, it looks like he's pretty much going to get it now, it seems. But how much further will things escalate now? Because the ball is now well and truly in his court. Right, so hundreds of missiles have been fired at Israel from Iran in the last hour or so bit more than that by the time this goes out, I'd imagine. Many of them were intercepted, but going by a lot of video footage that has been going around on social media as well, a lot of them might not have been. It was as if Iran were testing the waters when they first attacked Israel back in April, if we cast our minds back to that. It'll be several hours more before we start to get a definitive picture of whether or not Israel successfully repelled much of Iran's strikes this time, or if Iran certainly meant more business. But there are early reports that the latter may well be the case. Certainly, this was a much larger strike than we saw back in April. The missiles seen flying in towards Israel from the West Bank having been described as non-stop, and sirens were going off in so many parts of Israel that the siren tracking app apparently ended up crashing. Biden, as per usual, has sworn that the US will help defend Israel, like that is a surprise to anyone, quite frankly. Of course he will. It's what he always does. And it's just as typically the far right of Israel's government are full of threats and venom as well, with Israeli Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich promising Iran will regret what they've done tonight. Well, the warning is there to not retaliate, but since when does this Israeli administration listen to anyone? Iran's permanent mission to the UN has put out a statement following the attack, saying, Iran's legal, rational, and legitimate response to the terrorist acts of the Zionist regime, which involved targeting Iranian nationals and interests and infringing upon the national sovereignty of the Islamic Republic of Iran has been duly carried out. Should the Zionist regime dare to respond or commit further acts of malevolence, a subsequent and crushing response will ensue. Regional states and the Zionist supporters are advised to part ways with the regime. There is, of course, that argument, especially given the attack on their own soil, the assassination of Hamas negotiator Ismail Haniyeh in their capital, that Iran has a right to defend itself. That is the excuse always used for Israel, of course, isn't it? And naturally, there is that same reasoning attributable to Lebanon right now as well. And certainly, this is very much in line with what the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC, have said in their statement, which has just dropped, covered by Iran's FARS news agency. The IRGC said in a statement it has targeted the heart of the occupied territories in response to the martyrdom of Hezbollah chief Syed Hassan Nasrallah in Beirut, Hamas political bureau Ismail, Haniyeh and Brigadier General Abbas Nil Furushan at the hands of the Israeli regime. The statement added the RGC has fired tens of ballistic missiles at vital military and security Israeli targets on Tuesday. The IRGC stressed that the attack was in line with Iran's right to legitimate self-defense as per the United Nations Charter and in response to the Zionist regime's escalating crimes backed by the United States against the people of Lebanon and Palestine. It warned the Tel Aviv regime that if it intends to react militarily to Iran's operation, which conforms with Tehran's legitimate rights and the international law, it will have to face subsequent crushing and devastating strikes. Now, they are also claiming that 80% of the rockets they fired hit their targets, but being an Iranian news outlet, and them all being to some extent or other under the control of the authorities there, they pretty much would say that. Israel, meanwhile, are saying the complete opposite, because, of course, they would say that too. So it will take some time before we know better by some more independent, more credible sources. But what was different this time to when Iran struck on April 13th? Well, back then, the strike in response to the Israeli attack on Iran's embassy in Damascus was to give plenty of warning in advance to the US and other Western powers allied to Israel that the attack was coming. There was plenty of notice, but this time there wasn't. The US got a heads up of about an hour the last attack was seen by many, myself included, that it was a test of Israel's defences to see what Western powers did in response and test 
Israelis defense systems and see where they were. This was a much bigger attack this time, ostensibly a retaliation again for an Israeli attack, as the premise of it was. But what did they achieve and was it what they intended? Was it just to push back on Israel and draw some red lines for them to not cross? Newsflash, they're going to. They've already said they will strike back again, even though it was they that struck the first time carrying out that assassination in Tehran, but no doubt the media will provide cover as they usually do, and already it's being called an Iranian attack rather than a response to an Israeli attack last July, of course. Apart from the course by now for those of us those of us that are on to it. But no right to self defense for anyone but Israel, of course, is the message also being sent. Another key difference between April and this time is the ordnance being fired as well. Back in April, Iran launched drones and cruise missiles, which are, relatively speaking, slower and easier to intercept. Again, this played into that notion that they were testing defense systems then. This time, however, Iran fired ballistic missiles, much faster, much harder to intercept, seemingly more of them, therefore it was an escalation. What was also different this time was that some of Iran's targets were actually within Gaza, with reports saying tanks in the Netzarim corridor, the artificial road Israel built across Gaza, having been targeted this time. Again, the IRGC claiming success about that, but again, they would, and it all needs verifying. Israel, naturally, obviously, of course, they're threatening retaliation again. The Israel envoy to the UN, Danny Dannon, has spouted off about a severe response should now be expected on Twitter, saying, Iran has now launched an attack against Israel. We are ready and prepared defensively and offensively. We will take all necessary measures to protect the citizens of Israel, as we have previously made clear to the international community, any enemy that attacks Israel should expect a severe response. Well, you attack them first. They have a right to self-defense, and let's not even go there about proportionality either after what you lot have been doing in Gaza for now nearing one year. Israel aren't the only ones handing out threats tonight in response to this attack, though. So is Iraq. Iraq, of course, remains home to a significant number of U.S. military bases from the days of the Iraq War, and the Iraqi Resistance Coordination Committee have said that if Washington decides to support Israel in attacking Iran, they would then target those bases. A statement put out on tele Telegram by them has said, if the Americans intervene in any hostile action against the Islamic Republic, or if the Zionist enemy uses Iraqi airspace to carry any bombing operations on its territory, then all American bases and interests in Iraq and the region will be our target. Yet more escalation. That's about as much as I've been able to gather tonight. Obviously, there's an awful lot to work out and find out as the hours move on and we go into the cold light of day tomorrow. Uh, there will surely be more to speak of about this in due course, in which case. It's awful news that the situation in the Middle East is now worsening. I hope to God there isn't a dramatic number of casualties in all of this, but of course, that's almost guaranteed. There could be no peace, though, whilst Israel, or its government at least, remains so determined to make matters worse. and Idiots in the West keep enabling them to do so. I hope we catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.